Uh, welcome, welcome to To The Point. Uh, two very interesting programs now. The first one is about uh, keys to longer life. And the second one is about renewing our youth, both from biblical principles. Now, of course, I've got my friend Derek Walker from Oxford Bible Church, very well known to Revelation TV, to explain all of this to us. So, Derek, thanks very much for coming. Thank Welcome you. again. Thank to you, Turn Richard. Point. It's good to be here. So tell us all about these very, the first program is, as I say, going to be about keys to longer life. But before yeah. we get involved with that, I wonder if we could just talk about divine healing. Yes, because, um, you know, I think there's been a lot of teaching on healing and, yeah. and many Christians have come to believe that God wants to heal us. And, right. and I really believe that, um, you know, that's really just the starting point. Mm. It's not the whole story. We want to yeah. go further th today, mm. but... You know, God's our loving Heavenly Father. What Father wants his right. children sick? You know, yeah. Christ on the cross, it says, he bore our infirmities, he carried yeah. our sicknesses. He bore them so he doesn't want us to bear them. You know, his name is, the, I am the Lord, your healer. So that's in his very name, his very character. And so, you know, and, and you were a doctor, Richard, and, yeah. uh, you know, if you were treating, you were trying to help them get healthy, yeah. but if it isn't God's will... <laughs> to heal us, then you were working against God's will. Mm. But, but that's a silly, isn't it? So uh, I think we need to take that as a starting point, that God wants to heal us of our sicknesses. Mm. And, uh, and I've actually written a book. If we can show a picture on the yeah. screen uh, at this point, um, I've written a book called uh, You Can Receive Healing, Getting Healed, mm. How to Receive Your Healing. And uh, if, if anyone wants help in that area of receiving healing, yeah. We've got that book available, and uh, it's um, you can always get it through our website at oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk. Right. Um, so uh, just wanted to show everyone got hold of that. If you want to get hold of that book, uh, it's oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk. Yeah. Now, actually, if you just uh, I just want to say something. I'm not supposed to take that much time with this, but I feel quite strongly on this subject. Is that um, although we say doctors healed this and doctors healed that, they don't actually. For example, um, some of you know I was involved in a road traffic accident. I had 11 fractures. Um, now, I'm very grateful to the surgeon who you know, set my fractures, but actually it was God who healed the fractures because within our bones there are cells called osteoblasts and osteoclasts whose function is to mend bones. So actually I think God takes the healing for an awful lot of the healing, if not all of the healing, um, mm. not the doctors. Anyway, back to you. I'm fair sorry enough. to steal, no, steal that. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> So well, it's one thing to receive healing, and I wrote a book on that, but right. God's will actually is, is that we would actually walk in health yeah. and that he wants us to have long life. And that's really what I want to share about today, that it's not just God's will for us to be healed, but for us to have long, a mm. long and a full life. Yeah. You know, and I, there's very little teaching about that. Yeah. Uh, and so that's why I wrote this other book called Live Long and Strong. Uh, and I don't know any other books that are particularly devoted to, to, to building your faith that God actually wants you to have a long life. Mm. There you are. There's your book. Live Long and Strong. Excellent. And uh, again, that's uh, available mm. from us. So if, you, if anybody wants to get hold of that book of, of Derek's, it's, uh, make sure I get it right, oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk. Co. There we are. Yeah. So, um, right, well, let's carry on then. So um, you've, you've written a follow-up to the Long Life book, and that's Live Long and Strong. Mm. Now, why do we need to study this subject? Yes, I think a lot of people have the idea that, um, you know, I'll die when I die, a kind of... Yeah. fatalistic idea yeah I'm kind of passive in that area but you know it's true for about all the promises of God you know God has the Bible says that uh, in Christ we're blessed with every blessing every promise is ours you know we have this amazing inheritance that Jesus has bought for us on the cross but it's true in every area that we have to possess these promises by faith yeah. you know it's not automatic Right. And so it is that if God has promised us long life, 
doesn't mean that's automatic. We need to know the scriptures on that. We need to know the promises and we need to lay hold of that inheritance. You know, it's the picture of the children of Israel had to possess their promised land. Mm. First of all, they failed because of unbelief. Yeah. They didn't enter in. The la God gave it to them, but yeah. they didn't take possession. Yeah. And so under Joshua, through faith, yeah. they took possession. It says everywhere you put the sole of your foot, I give it to you. And yeah. so we need to know the promises in this area. Yeah. And so there's a lot of ignorance in this area. Otherwise, we will not possess what is ours. Yeah. And that way, Satan is able to steal. You know, Jesus said, the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. Yeah. But I've come that they may have life. Yeah. But if we don't know the promise, we can't partake of it. You know, I'm reminded of 2 Peter uh, 1, 3. It says, his divine power has, has given to us all things. Yeah. that pertain to life and godliness. Yeah. He's given us that promise of long life. But he says, um, it says, by which have been given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that through these you may become partakers mm. of the divine nature. So yeah. God's promised us these things. We are to take these promises, trust ourselves to them, and that way we partake of yes. the life in those promises, of the long life that God has promised us. So we have an inheritance, but we have to take hold of it now. Mm. Derek, so, can I just take you back a little bit, if you hope mm. you don't mind? Uh, it's not just Christians who watch these programs. Sometimes we have people who are not familiar with the scriptures. Mm. Now, um, you talked about taking the promised land, and you and I, of course, know, and many viewers know, that Joshua and Caleb actually inherited and got into the promised land. But, mm. of course, there were ten spies who gave a bad report, didn't That's they? Right. So perhaps you could remind the viewers of that story, because not everybody knows that story. Well, that's it. I mean, they, they, uh, God had promised them this land, but the ten spies who focused on the, the difficulties, the opposition, yeah. didn't believe that report. They believed yeah. the evidences of their senses, and so they failed to enter in, yeah. and they died young. Yeah. Um, but those who did believe, like Joshua and Caleb, they, yeah. were, they entered into the land, their life and Moses, of course, and their life wasn't shortened. So yeah. our faith in the promise is, is vital. The Bible says my people are destroyed because of a lack of knowledge. Yeah. So this is why I'm teaching on this, because if we're ignorant of God's word in this area, yeah. we won't lay hold yeah. and we won't take hold of our inheritance yeah. in that area. Yeah. And so if we're just passive thinking, well, I'll die when I die, yeah. then we will actually miss God's best for our life. Yeah. yeah, good point. Yeah, well done. Sorry, I think I interrupted you slightly, didn't I? I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Just that, uh, as I said, not everybody is familiar with all the scriptures. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, coming back to the scriptures, um, what does actually the Bible teach about long life? Is it the 70 years in Psalm 90, or 80 years if you're strong, I believe, isn't it? Uh, or what, what would you say? What is a, a, a Bible-recommended long life, Derek? Well, the... Uh First of all, let me just mention that there are some wonderful promises of long life that, that we need to know, you know, yeah. that we're not just plucking that out of nowhere. You know, my favorite one is Psalm 91, verse 16. Uh, it says, with long life, I will satisfy him yeah. and show him my salvation. And uh, so God does promise long life if we will abide in the presence of God. Um, you know, there many times it says... Uh, if you, you will serve the Lord your God and I will take sickness away from your midst and the full number of your days I will fulfill. Mm. See, um, often, you know, they, he says, choose life, cling to God. He is your life and the length of your days. Mm. So in other words, God promises to give us long life. Uh, Proverbs 3, he says, if you receive the word of God, it says length of days mm. and long life and peace they will give to you. Mm. So God does give us long life. It says wisdom mm. in particular. Length of days is in her right hand. Um, receive my sayings, Proverbs 4.12. Mm. And as a result, the years of your life shall be many. Oh. So long life is definitely promised in the Bible. And in fact, it's connected with you know, honor the f your father and mother, uh, that your days might be long 
mm. uh, in the land. And that's repeated in the New Testament. So mm. it's not just an Old Testament promise. Yeah. Uh, and so there are things we need to do to have a long life, but it is God's best for us. Mm. And, and one more I will bring to your attention. Psalm 34, 12 says, Who is the man that desires life and loves many days mm. that he may see good? Mm. Good days, many days. Keep your tongue from evil. Right. he says, and your lips from speaking deceit. And again, Psalm 91, 16, with long life, I will satisfy him mm. and show him my salvation. Mm. So I'm sorry I didn't answer your question because no. I wanted to say that, just to lay that foundation before asking the question, what is a long life then? Because mm. a lot of Christians will then think, well, yes, isn't it 70 years? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, the bi in Psalm 90, yeah. and in fact, Moses wrote Psalm 90 and Psalm 91, Right. Uh, in Psalm 90.10, it says, the days of our years are 70 years, and if by reason of strength, they're 80 years. Yeah. A lot of people think, well, that's a long life, 70 or 80. Mm. The problem with that is, well, uh, well uh, is when you hit your 60s, <laughs> you're thinking, I'm old, I'm about to die. Yeah. And your body and mind starts winding down at that point because you think you're you're near the end because your the your yardstick is 70 years and you think that's biblical yeah and actually that's not the case because psalm 90 if you read the whole psalm we don't have time was actually written in the wilderness we just talked about the children of israel mm. in the wilderness they were under a curse right. and if you read the psalm it talks about the fact that they're under a curse the curse was that they weren't allowed to enter into the land. Right. You know, they all died in the wilderness mm. within that 40 years in the wilderness. So they were under a curse of a shortened life. And Moses is talking about the 70 or 80 years are actually of people under, a, under the curse. Oh, really? That is not the normal human lifespan. Moses himself lived to 120. Yeah. So the next psalm is the psalm under the blessing of God, which is with long life I will satisfy him. So if you're not satisfied with 70 years, have more. If you're not satisfied with 80 years or 90 years or 100 years, with long life I will satisfy him. Yeah. So what is the measure? Hmm. The biblical measure, I believe it's 120. Yeah. Now I'm not saying that we would live to 120 necessarily or that we have to, but if you want to use a yardstick to measure a full human mm. lifespan, mm. it's 120 years. And medically, yeah. that's about the case yeah. of a maximum length. Yeah. So in other words, here am I, I'm, I'm in my 50s. Mm. You know, I'm still <laughs> not quite halfway, you know. Yeah. So I need, if I see that, I'll see myself mm. not as someone who's getting old, Someone who's approaching middle age, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it affects the way we think about ourselves. It does, actually. If it's 120 and you're 70, you, that will help you start not to think like you're an old person and, and you begin to close down at that point. Yeah. 120 is biblical because it's in Genesis 6.3. Basically, um, he says there that uh, it's, it's before the flood. And God, yes, fair enough. It does apply. God says, I'm going to give uh, man an op I'm going to give man 120 years. Mm. I, ma God's spirit will not always strive with man. Mm. But here it is. Genesis 6, 3. My spirit will not always strive with man. He also is flesh. Yet his days shall be 120 years. Now, some people limit it to saying, well, that was given 120 years before the flood. Like that was a flood warning. Mm. Fair enough. But actually, if you read it, it's, it's a limit on man generally, mm. not just that particular generation before the flood. God was limiting human lifespans to 120. Before the flood, they lived much longer. After the flood, what you see with the ages is they start coming down to 120. Mm. So God was saying, setting a limit of 120 years. So if you want to measure a full human lifespan, well, even today, the average life is about 80, isn't it? Mm. And that's just for anyone. Yeah. You know, so how can we say that uh, God's promise of long life for believers living in the blessing of God yeah. is 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 limited to 70 or 80 when mm. that's actually just an average lifespan for a sinner in the world? Yeah. You know, we're setting our sights too low. Yeah. Um, we need to realize God's promise of long life. It could be up to 120 
with long life I will satisfy him. You know, if you hit 99 and you think, oh, that's enough, I want to go home now. <laughs> Fair enough, you know. Yeah. But um, that's what we need to renew our mind, hmm. to see a long and a full life is actually measured up to 120. Yeah. So many of us, if we're listening, we're 60, 70, you know, don't start packing in because <laughs> there's still ma many good years in you, yeah. you know. Is, well, that's is relief, the, actually. You know, that's the message, really, that I'm trying <laughs> to get a across. That's <laughs> no, you, know, you, you just extended my anticipated yeah, you know. life by a long way, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but we do need to renew our mind, because yeah, yeah. it's true that if we believe we're going to die in the next five or ten years, because we're hitting 60, yeah. so that's 70, say, um, our body will respond to mm. how we think in our yeah. mind. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely right. So, where have we got to now? Long life. Now, um, some people may say, now doesn't the Bible say that there is an appointed time for us to die? See, a lot of people think that, you know, yeah. it's just, it's not in their hands at all. Um, now, it does say in Hebrews 9.27, um, it's appointed unto men to die once. Right. And after that comes the judgment. Yeah. It doesn't say there's an appointed time to die. Yeah. It says it, yes, it's appointed that we will die, and after that will be the judgment. Yeah. But the Bible doesn't say there's an appointed time to die. In fact, there are many verses that say if you do certain things, you will lengthen your life, and if you do other things, you will shorten your life. So there can't be like a fixed time. No. In fact, um, it's a very interesting story um, by Kenneth Hagen. Tells a story when he was he was a very sickly young man, and and God healed him when he was seventeen, and. He was healed, but very weak. Mm. Uh, and this supernatural voice came to him, mm. actually saying um, something like, your life is like a vapor here today and gone tomorrow. Mm. And now today is your appointed time to die. Mm. Very supernatural. And he thought it was God. Mm. And he sat, kind of sat down waiting to die. Mm. Um, and... But as he did that, coming up in his spirit, and he didn't really know this verse very well, but it was, with long life I will satisfy him oh, and yeah. show him my salvation. And, yeah. it, and he perked up. But then this other supernatural voice came. It's your appointed time to die. <laughs> and yeah. Kenneth Hagen was confused because he was hearing these two voices, yeah. one of which was saying, pack it in. The other one was saying, you know, with long life I will satisfy him. And he began studying the scriptures and, 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 you know, he saw that it was in the Bible, with long life. And then this voice kind of said, no, well, that's just for the Old Testament. Mm. And so we found in the New Testament, like Ephesians 6, 2 and 3, that, you know, you will live long on the earth. Yeah. And, and, and in 1 Peter 3, 9 yeah. says, uh, he who desires life. Mm long life, let him keep his lips from evil. Mm -hmm. And then he saw it, it's in the New Testament. And then he realized this other voice was Satan. Yes. Trying to convince him yeah. to die. Yeah. And as soon as he realized, he declared, I will live a long life. I will live another five years. I'll live another 10 years. I'll live another 20 years. I'll live another 30 years. I'll live a long life and I'll preach the gospel. Yeah. And we need to get it on our lips. Like Psalm 118, 17. I shall not die but I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. I like or I like, to add, I like to say like this, I shall not die young. We've got to proclaim that. Yeah. I shall not die young, but I will live long and proclaim the works of the Lord. Yeah. We, we have to fight for our life because there is an enemy. The thief comes to kill, steal and destroy. Absolutely. But Jesus, I've come that they may have life. But we've got to believe in Jesus and his life. Sure. And so there isn't an appointed time to die. Um, there are, in fact... Things that we can do, you know, Ecclesiastes says for every thing there's a season, there's a, mm. there's a time to plant, there's a time to die, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. Mm. But if we ask the question, when is it right to pluck up what is planted? It's when it's full grown, yeah, okay. when it's come to ripeness. If you plant something and the moment it peaks above the earth, you rip it out. That isn't the time for it to die. Yeah. It's the time for it to come to its fullness. And so the time to die is in fullness of age, right. fullness of life. Um, the Bible says things will do, for instance, uh, Proverbs 13.3, he who guards his mouth mm. 
keeps his life. Mm. But he who opens wide his lips shall have destruction. So you can bring, mm. uh, sh you can shorten your life, you can lengthen your life. Mm. You know, um, let me, let me uh, give one example of that. Um, basically, Proverbs 9.11, By me your days shall be multiplied. Mm and your years increased. Mm. So in other words, if you fo take the word of God in, you will increase your years. Mm. Um, if you are foolish, other scriptures talk about, if you're foolish, you will actually shorten your life. No. So it's just not true that there's an appointed time to die. No. We, that makes us passive. That whole way of thinking makes us passive, yeah. and that will lead to a short life. Yeah. Just to intervene a little bit, some some viewers might be thinking, well, of course, Jesus actually had a relatively short life. Yes. So I'm sure you've got an answer to that. Well, that's, that's a good point, isn't it? Because <laughs> Jesus just lived to 33, you know, yeah. and that's not yeah. a long life, isn't yeah. it? In fact, that, I'm so glad you raised that because it says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, right. that Christ became a curse for us. Yes, it was. Now, actually, I believe that Jesus, who was perfect, yeah. he could have lived forever. Yeah. You know, he could have claimed his promise of long life yeah. and, and continued to live. Yeah. But he gave his life up for us. And it, the Bible says he became a curse for us. True. Mm. So that we might have the blessing. Yeah. Now, curses is he who hangs on a tree. So in other words, Jesus took the curse of a short life for us so that we could have the blessing of long life. Mm. You see? Mm. So what he did was redemptive. Mm. By taking our sin, by taking our death, by taking a short life, mm. a shortened life, he did that so that we might be blessed. Right. So one reason we should live a long life, <laughs> yeah. you see, is to glorify God, yeah. it is, to, is to show his blessing. Yeah. Because why, you know, if we have a short, you know, Jesus died for us, that we would have a long life. Yeah. He had a short life so we could have a long life. So well, actually, that makes an awful lot of sense. Um, I don't know if any viewers are really enjoying this because it actually is quite a revelation to me. Um, so um, if you've got any questions you want to ask Derek, please write to info at Revelation TV. Uh, the email will actually come to me, but I will forward it to Derek, and I'm sure he'll be delighted to answer it for you. So can you just remind us of any particular books you've read that we could remind us what to do? And also, anything particular we should avoid doing uh, to make sure that we don't have a shorter life than we should have. Yes, I've obviously put a lot in my book on the yeah. keys to long life. I'll, I'll just hit some high points very quickly. That what is the, some keys? Six keys to long life is one of my chapters. Yeah. Put the word of God first. We've talked about that. Yeah. Uh, another thing that I, I talk about I is use your tongue right. to speak life. The Bible says life and death are in the power of the tongue. Yeah. Proverbs 18. So speak life with your tongue. Declare life with your tongue. Mm. No, don't, do not declare death. Right. Declare, I will live long. With long life, I will be satisfied him. It's been proved medically. Another key is go to church. <laughs> yeah. It's been shown that those who, who are regular churchgoers yeah. do actually have a longer life. Right. And another key in the Bible is honoring authority. Rebellion is something that will shorten your life. Mm. Honor true authority, parents first of all, and other authorities. That is a major key to long life. That's the fourth commandment. Right. Uh, not the fourth one, but anyway. Yeah. The first commandment with promise. Yeah. Honor your parents that you may live long. Yeah. And, and another key is obeying and serving God willingly. There's this verse, if you're willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Oh, right. So it's not just that we dutifully do the right thing. To have the blessing of long life, we do it from the heart. Right. We, we do it willingly. What are some killers to long life? Well, uh, some of them are obvious and some of them might be surprising. Um, sin <laughs> is a killer, obviously. The wages of sin is death. Um, but more specifically, unforgiveness is a major killer. Bitterness, unforgiveness. If you want to shorten your life, just allow the poison of unforgiveness into your heart. Evil speech, we've talked about that. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Uh, another one is worry. Right. When you carry the burdens on yourself, yeah. rather than cast your cares on the Lord. Yeah. You know, one thing 
I have to be careful about is not to get stressed. You yeah. know, I'm always under time pressure. Yeah. That stress wears the system down. Yeah. And, uh, and we need to learn to cast our cares on the Lord, trust in Him, and live in the peace of God. And worry will kill you. Hmm. And finally, I would say passivity. Passivity. I think it's been shown that people who live long are fighters. Yeah. Not fighting people, <laughs> necessarily, yeah. but they have fight in them. Right. You know, they've got that fight in them. And, and there is a battle. Right. You know, death is an enemy. Sickness is an enemy. And we're in a battle. And we need to fight the fight of faith. And the fight of fa faith is to declare the word of God. And declare the will of God. Yeah. Well, I want to uh, thank you, Derek, for coming and talking about this terribly interesting subject, living a long life. If you've got any questions, do uh, write to info at revelationtv.com. I will pass them on to Derek, any comments you've got to make. And I find this quite revelation because I thought I was going to live to 80, but I'm actually going to live to 120. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to put up with me for a lot longer. <laughs>